So hello my friends, Devon Linux here, Photography PX. In today's video we will cover the main highlight features and do an overview of Canon's Rebel T7, also known as the 2000D or 1500D. Initially released in the spring of 2018, the T7 marks another installment into the entry-level DSLR segment and Canon's Rebel series. It's a camera Canon aims to continue the trend of affordable and capable DSLRs aimed at first-time users looking to upgrade from a smartphone or a point-and-shoot camera. On paper, it seems only to promise a single update, which is a desperately needed upgrade to the predecessor's sensor. Otherwise, it appears to be mostly the same. Canon aims this camera to compete with Nikon's D3500, Sony's A6000, and Panasonic's G7. It features a brand new 24.1 megapixel CMOS sensor with an optical low pass filter and the Digic 4 Plus image processor, finally ditching the predecessor's long standing 18 megapixel sensor. And while it's not the latest generation of the sensor used in their current cameras, it does provide a modest improvement in image quality. Outside of this, the camera maintains the predecessor's 3 frames per second continuous shooting speed but it now provides a large 70 shot buffer. On the video front, it shoots 1080p full HD video up to 30 frames per second in the highly friendly MOV format for easy sharing and smooth post processing. And the camera also supports basic editing like trimming in the playback mode as well. The camera's Digic 4 Plus processor, while a bit dated compared to the eighth iteration of the processor used in more current cameras, still manages to remain capable. The camera features a native ISO range from ISO 100 to 64,000, further expandable to 12,800, and users can expect usable images up to ISO 3200 where noise is well controlled and details are generally intact. For displays, it features the same optical viewfinder as the predecessor, which has a magnification of 0.8 times and a 95% coverage of the imaging area, standards for this class. It also provides a 3-inch rear LCD, though it is fixed and lacks touch functionality. For focus, it maintains the 9-point autofocusing system as the predecessor, where the central most point is also cross-type compatible. Physically, the layout and button configuration remains virtually identical to the predecessor, and the build quality remains true to other Canon Rebel entries as well. While a bit plasticky, it's sturdy enough and features quite a large grip for comfortable handling. Outside of that, it features a built-in flash and wireless connectivity. In the end, the Canon T7 is an excellent beginner's camera. However, it does have a few drawbacks in comparison to the competition. While it's mostly an incremental update over the T6 and one Canon has played relatively safe with, it does remain capable for the target audience. It delivers the core features needed for beginners to learn and master the basics, and while not the strongest camera in this price range, it does deliver a better package than what a smartphone alone can provide, and a good option for the price. So there you have it my friends, there are the highlights and the overview of Canon's T7. For more information on the T7 and other Canon cameras, check out our website photographypx.com, go to our camera reviews page then to the Canon section, and there you will see a full detailed written review, as well as other reviews of cameras that may be of interest to you. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the contents of today's video insightful and it added value to you. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, leave us a like and a comment in the description down below. Let us know if we overlook something or we missed something that we covered in today's video. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, Photography P. Dot com.